system. It's the system that uh, produces a lot of uh, problems for captains and engineers. It's cooling. Uh, when you have a cooling problem, it's because uh, previous to that problem, you have a, a lack of lubrication in some part of the engine. No? If you have lack of lubrication in that area, for sure you have a right now overheating in that area. And uh, if you have overheating, it's because the situation right now is critical. It's pretty close to be catastrophic. Uh, if you don't pay attention, if you don't stop the engine immediately, if you don't verify what happened. Uh, the people normally say, oh, my engine is running a little high temperature. It's not in the red area. For that reason, I continue running. No, my friend. If the needle goes up than the normal, more than the normal, stop. That's not normal. It's clear, guys? The people think that only if it's in the red area, the needle in the gauge temperature, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. Remember, later we are going to, to check. In a, depending on the engine, uh, each engine have a different range of temperature. Temperature of operation, you have in your book, uh, in, in that table, uh, you have the range of temperature typical for Volvo, for, uh, for Cummins, for uh, Caterpillar, and uh, all of them are in between one, 170 degrees and 210. In, in, other, in other words, 180 is the middle of those range of temperature. For that reason, doesn't matter what uh, model of engine, what manufacture of engine is this, 180 is the magic number. The, the temperature should be around 180. If you run the engine out of the limit, that's not good. Be careful because diesel engines, is better if the engine is running in the high side of the range, not in the lower side. In gasoline, it's better, low temperature. In diesel, a little, the, the maximum of the range is good because it's the operation. Remember that in diesel, you need temperature. Temperature for good explosion, for good ignition. For that reason, oh, my, my diesel engine is running in the limit of the, of the range of temperature. That's okay. It's out of the limit. No, no, it's in the range. Okay, that's perfect. That's good. If it's out of the limit, yes, you need pay attention or you need check. What is the secret when you have a problem in a, in a, in, with a diesel engine related with temperature. What is the secret in the analysis, in the diagnosis? The secret, Captain, is isolate the problem. My problem is in the raw water side or my problem is in the coolant side. Because when you have high temperature in the gauge, you don't know where is the problem. You don't know if it's in the block, in the head, in the, you don't know if the mixture is lean, Something is wrong, but now I have high temperature in the coolant, but that probably is not a problem in the coolant. It's because I have lack of raw water in the heat exchanger. Yeah, but uh, I need to identify where is the problem. If it's in the salt water side or if it's in the coolant side. To avoid problems, to avoid inconvenience, my recommendation is Always, 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 number one, check the path of raw water and verify if the raw water enters properly in the seacock, pass through the valve, enter in the, in the raw water pump, goes out of the raw water pump, and enter in the different heat exchanger that you have in the boat, and if you have water coming out of the boat. If you have water coming out, it's because the water is circulating. If you have water coming out intermittent, what happens? Some blades of uh, the impeller are broken. For that reason, you have inter intermittent flow of water. Check always, try to check, try to check the other engine. Oh, the other engine, the flow is constant. In this one is intermittent. Probably, I have a problem with the impeller of the raw water pump. Now we are going to talk about 
butt pumps, the raw water pump and the coolant pump. Butt pumps, those pumps are different. Okay, this is the typical raw water pump with flexible <coughs> impeller. Now, it's moved by belt in a small diesel engines or gear with gear. This one is other gear in the train of gears. You remember one gear for cam, other gear for crank, other gear for fuel, fuel, pump. fuel <coughs> injection pump, other gear for no, oil, oil pump. pump, and probably other one for, for raw water in some cases. In other cases, the raw water is outside with belt connected to the, to the harmonic balancer of the crankshaft. This one is external. All right. Number one, verify that I have flow of raw water. This is, this is this, the, 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 the path of the salt water. Remember, in a typical diesel, marine diesel engine, you have more than one heat exchanger. No? One heat exchanger for what? For the coolant, number one. Other one for? Excuse me? Fuel. Fuel. Motor oil. Transmission oil. Air. And other one for? Hydraulic fluid. Sitting fluid. It's around six. Oh, wow. It's a lot of pumps. Excuse me. Those pumps use the same flow of raw water? Yes, the raw water start here in the seacock, the raw water continue, enter in the first heat exchanger, second one, third, four, five, six, um, and the, the last one is the heat exchanger that is connected with the elbow of the exhaust, and bye-bye. This is the last one, no? Because at the end of the day, the gases and the, and the, and the salt water is mixed in the elbow of the exhaust. I explained in, the, in previous classes that situation. Okay, we are going to analyze a couple of engines and we are going to verify the path of the salt water. Look at this engine. This is the tank with the raw water. Suppose that you have here the sea cock. The raw water pass for? Sea strainer. Sea strainer. And the raw water enter in this element. This element is the pump. Is the pump. It's moved by? Bell. Bell. Look at this. The raw water enter here. The impeller is here. This is the plate for the impeller. The impeller is here. And this is the output of raw water. You see? Input and output. output. Come on, Captain. Once again, raw water, filter. Raw water enter here. The impeller is here. This is the plate. It's difficult, no? Okay. The raw water enters here and goes out and enters in the first heat exchanger. Let me explain something before I advance here. Look at this heat exchanger. The raw water enters here, goes through the pipes, and goes here out. And internally, you have one division here, one serpentine here, other serpentine here. Ah, this is a heat exchanger integrated with two elements. <coughs> one for motor oil and the other for coolant. There are other ones with three. One, two, three. There are other ones with five or six. This one is for? Two. two. We are going to continue. The raw water enter here. The pump send the raw water and I have in this heat exchanger three compartments. One, two, and three. You see? In the first one, look at this. In the first one, I have this. What is this? What is this? What is this? Motor oil. Motor oil. oil. Ah, the first one is the cooler for? Motor oil. Oil cooler. Look at the second one. The second one. The second one. What is this? Fuel. Fuel. Fuel pump. Fuel filter. Fuel. Ah, this is the fuel filter. You see? Okay. This is the output going into the injectors. Ready? Ah, fuel 
And look at the last one. The last one is not used because that one will be used here in the transmission. You understand? This is for transmission oil. Ah, I have motor oil, fuel, and transmission oil integrated in one heat exchanger. Anybody follow me? Ah, yeah. oh, Mr. Lopez, you have open, open those those fittings. When you start the engine, you have a uh, water coming out. No, no, because, no, because the water passed through the pipes. And uh, here you don't have nothing. I am going to use that one in the future to connect the transmission. Ready? Okay, look at this. The salt water cool three, three fluids. Motor oil, fuel, and transmission oil. And the salt water continue. Continue here and enter in this element. Look at this element, have fins. It's metallic. Raw water enter here and after that continue over there. What is this? The intake manifold. Look at this. This is the intake manifold here. In the intake manifold I have what? Intake manifold. Air filter. I have yes. air filter and Suction. and the turbo. The air. 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 Ah. In diesel engines. If the diesel engine have turbo like this, I need to reduce the temperature of what? The air. The air. The air. To avoid that the air enter too hot, producing vapor lock. No? Ah, okay, look at this. The raw water enter, circulate here, and return here. And reduce the temperature of the air. And the raw water reduce the temperature of the air, and the air enter in the intake manifold with lower temperature. The raw water continue and enter in this heat exchanger. This is the heat exchanger for? Coolant. The raw water enter here, you turn, return here, elbow of the exhaust, and bye bye. Look at this engine, guys. <coughs> the raw water is coming from the raw water. The raw water enter here in the heat exchanger, go here, go here, go into the elbow of the exhaust and bye-bye raw water with gas. And that's it. This engine only use one heat exchanger.